Welcome everyone, Intrepid Studios announced some cool tank changes coming to Ashes of Creation in their latest livestream and today we are going to have a look at those huge tank reveals. I'm super super excited. Hey what up boys, what a live stream to start the year with. Our worries about yeah. this being half-baked were certainly unwarranted and I cannot wait to jump straight into it and break down all the juicy new revamps for you today. However, as this is a video on a corporate platform made by a generic YouTuber, we need to do some cringy shilling to make sure my ego is stroked enough in the <laughs> analytics. After all, True. my life revolves around an arbitrary number that determines my worth and I simply cannot wake up in the morning without at least 30k likes on this video. That's but the sad before truth. Before we get into that, our patrons and I would love for you to grab yourself a Copa Cola. Copa Cola, because this live stream was so <laughs> I knew it. detailed and jam packed with information that I simply cannot do the showcase justice in this less than 10 minute breakdown. So, I'll link you to the full VOD and you have my blessing to go watch it after you've given me my monthly relevancy, that is. Now, <laughs> with all that bollocks out of the way... Let's begin, shall we? There are a bunch of new and interesting updates that I'll start today's video with before jumping into our one hour long tank showcase. Starting with the usual reminders and studio updates, which wasn't too different despite the amount of time it's actually been. Going, You know what I love so much about Intrepid Studios? How they're actually doing this every couple of months where they actually keep us informed and show us what they're actually doing. And I think that's also fair towards those people that actually donate and help the project right i was like the funding doesn't just come from themselves but also by the community and about some pre-orders that some of us did right for even a couple of hundreds of dollars like each individual right and like we actually get to see if we like donate what's actually being done with the money and i really love that about intrepid studios that they are like that open and that they're always going to talk about their roadmap, what they are doing. And I'm actually a big fan of the cleric now, like the archetype cleric. I want to play that probably because they showcase uh, what the cleric can do now, the skills, and it just looked so cool. Like, it's kind of like you're being a paladin or something. Like, it's, it's really cool. I'm like wondering what the tank update actually includes because maybe even a tank is now even more fun to play. Let's see. And yeah, by the way, guys, if you're new to this channel, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more content. All right, let's have a deeper look at the, the update. Forward Intrepid are looking to continue hiring towards their goals. In addition to this, Steven explained that feedback is imperative throughout this year, especially because they have a lot of things planned. Nudge, nudge, wink, yeah, wink. It's Steven good to went know on this to elaborate early, right? that a like lot has happened within good. the studio this month. The team are getting straight back into work and were eager to crack on with development towards their next milestone. We were told that so far, Alpha 2 has over 100,000 testers signed up, which which is three times the amount that they were planning for. So that's insanely positive for the future of this highly anticipated MMORPG. But True. the most important part I wanted to add in this section was a teaser for an upcoming live stream that I want to briefly speculate on. During the character art segment, Margaret showed us a shield that belongs to the Tower of Carfin, likely meaning so to include shield. the current milestone involving group combat throughout the next few months, we will see a nice, in-depth preview of that massive red why does this one remind me of a uh, naga in in wow right a little bit it's like some sort some of some sort of snake being or something that's cool i actually love the way the mobs look in ashes of creation like they put so much effort and time into design like how things look that i get this feeling that if you're like exploring the world like you will really enjoy it and there's going to be a lot of stuff to look at like it's, it's definitely going to be a beautiful game like what they did with like the weather and like the farming of trees and stuff like i think they are doing a very very good job when it comes to the environment and the look of the world in ashes of creation but i hope they don't set the goals too high that they can never accomplish them or it will take another six seven years because that would be crazy like i hope in like, like at least one or two years we get like the official release date of the game or something but who knows i'm not sure how long they're gonna take it can be three years four years let's see 
in-depth preview of that massive red tower in the distance of the Riverlands. Now, with that out of the way, let's jump straight into this one hour long tank update that I've lovingly, or painfully, depending on your perspective, reduced into a measly five minutes. Yes, and I'm happy about it. I already said this and I'll say it again at the end, but I simply could not convey everything shown in this one hour clip, obviously. Yeah, However, impossible. I made sure to include all the most important clips and discussion points throughout. Today's gameplay involved four players controlling the previously showcased fighter, cleric, ranger, and now, of course, the newly implemented tank. They were around level 13 and right off the bat, we got a slight preview of the art direction that they're taking with a few of their UI elements. Involving the backpack, quest log, map, and a little later on, we'll see the... I think that's a really nice looking map right there. I actually love the way it looks. For some reason, it reminds me of... Which game was it? it kind of like, I think it's in Zelda. There was like one Zelda game I played where it was a little bit like that too. Like, I, I love like the way the map looks. It's actually really nice. I think their UI is going to be really good, like in-game, that maybe you don't even need to download a freaking add-on or anything. Like you can just go with the base UI most most prob probably. It looks already good. Like I don't need anything to change here. Backpack, quest log, map, and a little later on, we'll see the looting UI with a traditional, very nostalgic, need or Hell greed mechanic coring. that I was very pleased to see, and the trading mechanics shown on screen now. This was actually very similar to what we had in Alpha 1, so if you want to interpret that in any kind of way whatsoever, window. be my guest. There were multiple points of feedback from the November livestream involving the mace that were a major focus for the showcase today as you'll see in a moment. Their gameplay started outside the ruins of a keep in a non-elite area surrounded by minotaurs, but they quickly transitioned into the elite zone involving a few bosses that did genuinely pose a threat to their group, so yeah. that was great to see. We got a preview of a bunch of abilities this time around, however, the details of how this is unlocked, customized, or progressed is still work in progress. The abilities on display from left to right were Shield Assault, a leap type ability that applies stagger upon impact, inciting strikes, a threat generation ability that hits twice in front of the tank, trembling bellows and a- That's actually cool how they make this with the tr threat generation. So let me guess, there's like a certain amount of, th of threat that needs to stay on, on a mob. So it's not like one skill and you pull the mob. But maybe you need to, as a tank, use multiple skills to keep up that threat, right? So there are like skills, some add like minor threat, some major threat or something. And as a tank, you probably have like more skills that add a major threat or something, right? So that's actually an interesting way to pull mobs because you're doing it by a level of threat and not by like a skill that taunts. So is there even a taunting skill? I'm not even sure. Probably they just have like different uh, threat values or something, right? But then you have to be like very careful as a, as a DPS that you don't over threat the mob, right? And the tank always keeps all his skills up. Uh, this would be some interesting group content then. Like, like dungeons are going to be really, really fun and interesting. And being a tank will be very, very interesting too, because you need to keep up so much. Twice in front of the tank, trembling bellows, an AOE cone ability that deals additional threat, grit, the tank's core ability that I will elaborate on in a moment, wow. Aegis, an AOE defensive bubble that life links everyone within the area That's and cool. directs the damage onto the tank. We see this utilized and overused quite a lot, which well, actually looks caused nice. Steven to take more damage than he could actually handle. Like and finally, Grapple, a basic pull and root ability that looked borderline glitched but hey alpha is alpha I, after I all i wonder how many more years we're going to be saying that but back onto the topic of grit this is one of the core mechanics for the tank and functions as an off global cooldown abilities you guys may be familiar from games like Looks world OP. of warcraft or final fantasy 14. steven and the team explained that yeah. every time a tank takes damage they gain a stack of courage when activating grit you gain an aura and your stacks of courage are consumed to reduce the amount of damage taken and i gotta say the it's team cool. are doing a fantastic job with the grit aesthetics and uh, wow so you sound like that smoking looks very similar no 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 wow. no it can't be uh, anyway it's very reminiscent Do of an active cooldown ability that 
does kind of function as a damage mitigation without a shield, showing that tanks can be viable using two-handed weapons. However, That's shields good. would increase the effectiveness of this ability. That's what I like so much in World of Warcraft on the Blood Death Knight, how you can be a tank with a two-handed weapon and stuff. I think this is really, really interesting. Like, yeah, one hand and shield, like, people associate you are a tank because you have a shield, right? Like, that's, like, the, the major thing of, like, most of the people. A tank needs a shield. But to also give the option for a tank to not have a shield, but, like, let's say a two-handed weapon or dual wield, I think this is so freaking cool. Like, it was something crazy. So, I was playing, like, Elder Scrolls Online the other day, and I was, like, with a tank in my group, and this tank had a magic staff. And I was like, what the heck, a Magicka tank with a staff. And he was really doing well in the dungeon. And I thought it was so cool that even in some games, you can be like a, a wizard kind of character and you can be a tank on it and stuff. Like, it's cool. And yeah, we have now the two-handed weapon, but who knows, maybe we get like dual wield and other stuff too that you can tank on. That would be interesting, holding two swords or two axes and you are a tank. <laughs> multiplicatively nice. like so that. a shield is the preferred loadout whilst we're on the subject of That's active like mitigation so let's discuss wow. active blocking when the party defeated the second boss we finally got a glimpse of the shield all throughout the remainder of the playthrough the damage the tank was taking with the shield equipped was noticeably less after combining the courage and shield together this seemed to make our tank a very powerful and necessary role within a group as of the course, other three members Whenever they were hit, we're getting absolutely melted. More emphasis on this is what I want to see because the worst case scenario for this game is ending up with an archetype like the tank being completely useless. Concluding the playthrough, the team did wipe a couple of times, which I was really pleased to see. Having any kind of difficulty at a low level like this is more than a breath of fresh air during these dark times of participation rewards and hand-holding within our currently popular MMOs. I have plenty of personal feedback for the general open-world oh, gameplay, no. but we'll save this for a later video as I'm running out of time for today yeah, and the tank we've died basically the group covered all the important points. Their final pull was was a disaster of course over pulling left right and center but ah. that's kind of the fun of group content well, uh, uh, does anyone remember that for those of you that played uh, wow especially during the vanilla days and stuff like now even you still get this problem but like how like hunters would always with their pets like freaking pull mobs that you didn't want like you have a hunter in your group you walk around in a dungeon and suddenly stuff just freaking attacks you out of nowhere and you didn't even pull it but this was the pet or something <laughs> Yeah, like a pet runs to a range mob and near to the range mob are other mobs and their radius they suddenly de detect oh there's a pet of a player attacking some mob we have to join the fight <laughs> ah i hate this so much with like hunters sometimes in wow but yeah or, or if you're in a group in general um, or sometimes you have like the individual in the group that doesn't walk with everyone but kind of like on the side somewhere and then they accidentally pull stuff Yo, I saw actually people getting uh, kicked from groups I queued with in WoW, for example, because like they pulled stuff that they shouldn't pull or they wanted to skip some, some mobs and just do a fast run and this person just kept pulling everything and it wasn't even a tank. Uh, to me anyway, but I am a masochist. It is important to note that the group zones in Ashes are designed for eight players and they were only four in this clip in my opinion it yeah. is a good starting point especially for a first preview but for now systems like stamina and mana to micromanage active blocking is still being discussed internally and the threat mechanics on display were not as clear as most I wonder of us how would that would like be like be. at the end aesthetically everything was stunning including the visual design on the environment when using their abilities as the grass would react a in a mob. satisfying way during thing. battle seeing Unreal Engine 5 in action no here is a beautiful thing, and you all know how much I love bat chesting over this engine. Although it is a fairly pointless aesthetic effect, it does wow. add so much to the immersion of the gameplay, helping to place these characters in the world. However, I love mechanically, so there's plenty of feedback to be <laughs> had, <laughs> so please do not hold back your thoughts when it comes to what you've seen today, and I'm really looking forward to reading your guys' comments on it. I can already see like from this fight, I'm not sure if they were like even focused and stuff, but I, I feel like this is going to be like Ashes of Creation, a very, very um, challenging MMO because you can see like there are a lot of harder fights and stuff. 
And I think like if you're like one of those hardcore players that want to clear all the difficult content, want to show off, oh, I've beaten this boss, I've done this dungeon. I feel like Ashes of Creation is really a game. If you're a good player, you can like show off your, your achievements and stuff because you can do stuff that nobody else can clear or like just the minority of players. I actually love that where you have like some, some more challenging uh, dungeons and bosses and stuff like fights where you actually begin sweating behind your monitor and stuff i think that's cool i like that world however mechanically so there's here. plenty of feedback to be had so please do not hold back your thoughts wow. when it comes to what you've seen today and i'm really looking forward to reading your guys comments on it as always, they ended the stream with an update on their also artwork, cool starting with a few new weapons for our upcoming Cyclops. Like now, I'm weapons. not sure what they meant by these, if these are cosmetic loot drops from defeating the Cyclops, or if some of the Cyclops will be wearing them, because Margaret did explain that there were a few types of Cyclops. Anyway, I'm sure it doesn't okay. matter because they look like they can easily be designed for both. Next up, we got a preview of probably the best work Intrepid have done so far with wow. the Nagash Shaman and my God, it looks absolutely mind-blowing. Really I good. cannot wait to see them in action because you guys really knocked Nagesh, it out of the park with just these. Like Next up, we got some weird ram bulldog mount thing what that most certainly thing? isn't night. What is this thing? This is like a half uh, ram? I guess like partially goat, partially dog or what? But that's a cool mount. <laughs> Imagine your... Wait, that's like an orc race. I forgot their name, but that's like an orc race, race in Ashes of Creation, right? And this orc race, if this is on this mount, it would look actually probably really cool. But it can also work on a dwarf, right? Marishly immersion wow. breaking, followed up by the Oak Stout. Something you'll notice about these two What's is this? that they're very distinctly two types of animals Mine mixed looks into cool. one. And <laughs> looks I cool, suspect I this is a pretty obvious preview of the animal husbandry potentials. However, baseless speculation, but the logical <laughs> conclusion like is there. Following that, we got the Risen Guardian, which looks great. Don't get me wrong. However, I am merely stalling out this script to keep it on screen long enough for you to observe. Finally, they concluded with a few new Vec hairstyles, both wow. head and facial. And although Can Vec is not my cup of tea, <laughs> it's still nice to see more customization options being fleshed out for the current races they I'll have ready Vec, so far. And that's They're pretty much of everything well. from this month's live stream. Again, I want to encourage everyone to actually go watch the full VOD over at twitch.tv forward slash ashes of creation as always i want to thank my patrons you guys are the small manly arms of a tank that caress me at night and without your support this balding middle-aged man wouldn't be able to live his dream of talking shit on the internet <laughs> if you made it to the end surely the video is worth giving a like and if you're of not course one of the 80 like. who haven't already why not go ahead and subscribe and Please i'll subscribe. see you in the next one because to both of us you're high on copium. copium. <laughs> That's the best ending. Yo, thumbs up, of course. That's good. Like, what I love is so much when they're like creators actually summarizing those uh, big live streams. Because otherwise we have to uh, react to like a one hour long video. And then I have to do so many cuts and stuff. Like, it's crazy. But, wow. I actually love the way the tank plays. Like, it's really, really nice. And this with the threat level. Like, I wonder what kind of of playstyle you have to adapt to as as a tank like you, like the rotation would probably be very interesting because you have to keep several skills up to pull the aggro right i don't think it's like just one skill and this one is enough you have to like maybe rotate around certain skills in the right order to keep the threat at a maximum and if you're slacking there like your group mates they will get attacked so i feel like being a tank in ashes of creation could be a tiny bit more difficult than in some other mmos that's good for those that like a challenge, but I wonder if like super casual players are going to be fine playing a tank. Not that the tank gets like super unpopular because of its difficulty, right? But I do love the animations of the tank. They look really cool. Like the weapon choices, how you can also have a two-handed weapon similar to in WoW a Blood Decay. I think that is super, super cool. I really like that here. The, the new uh, mob the, the, that looks like a naga from WoW looks really interesting. I love the, 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 the ropes, what he's wearing, the staff, and like the, the, the pointy teeth and all that. Looks really cool. But this mount, like half dog, half ram, it's interesting. 
But maybe on like a Vec or like, like the Orc or a Dwarf, it can actually look really nice maybe. We have to see. But those mounts, they are not store mounts, right? Or that one shown. We can actually get this one from, from clearing stuff or a quest or something, hopefully. But yeah, guys, this was interesting to check out. So what do you guys think about the new tank? Let me know in the comment section. And if you guys are new to this channel, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more content. And if you guys enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give this one a thumbs up. I wish everyone a wonderful day. I will see you guys next time.